The Filipino Channel with replay on Ball Sky Cable Channel 34 and for the first time ever in high definition on Sky Cable Channel 166. This is it, folks, as we greet you a pleasant afternoon from the Victim, the Araneta Coliseum, for the culmination of the best of three series in your season 72 UAAP. First, starting for the quintet, gunning for their first senior crown since 1985, here's the UE Red Warriors! And guy number 10, playing his last UAAP game today, Rudy Linganai! Guy number 14, Rafi! At four, number five, Bob Summer. Also at forward, playing his last UAAP game today, number 21, Val Acuna. And manning the post, also playing his last UAAP game, at center, number nine, the high flying Elmer. The head coach of the Red Warriors, rookie coach Lawrence Johnson. And now, celebrating its 60th centennial, 150th year on December 10 of this year, here's the starting five for the winning. Defending UAAP champions, the Ateneo de la Vera Blue Eagles. Playing his last UAAP game today at power forward, number seven, Nanai Bacal. Forward number 12, Kurt Wong. man in the middle, playing his last. Electric, it is crazy. Chills and goosebumps. There's just nothing like the UAAP experience. The hottest ticket in town, folks. Sudden death, and here are the starters for both UE and Ateneo. And a lot of them, as we mentioned earlier, this is going to be emotional as soon as they park their cars into the Araneta Coliseum. It will be their last time to play the game as a player for their respective schools. Well, looking at the starting fives that both coaches chose, no surprises for Coach Ronald Black. A bit of a surprise again from Coach Lawrence Chongson, but then again, we can call him Lawrence Surprise Me Chongson. That's been his middle name, and he's going with a small lineup again to start this game. And this time around, not starting with Paul Lee, but going with three small Spitfire guards, Lingana Reyes and Paul Samar. And here we go. Game number three. Winner take all, and first possession going to UE. Lingana steps back, way off the mark for his first attempt of the ball game. Will be Rafi Reyes and Jai. Lingana on Kirk. Raba with that familiar hook. And that's pretty much automatic. And UE there. 
there starting their first defensive set with a man-to-man -man, rather than going to their 2-3 zone. 2-0, the defending champions. Their juniors team winning the championship earlier. They went back-to-back. -back. Can they duplicate the feat? Samar from the corner gets it to go. Paul Samar averaging 50% from beyond the arc here in the finals. A bang in the bucket for Kurt Law. Second play in a row for UE to have some confusion in their matchups. Earlier, you also saw a UE guard. I'm not sure who it was. Forget his man. That was Kurt Law again. As you see this first triple from Paul Zamar. Alaksan FR three-point shot, body paint guy, it's on again, Talab and Alaksan FR from Paul Zamar. And this time around, Kirk Long, without any hesitation, taking advantage of the fact that he was left all alone to bring the ball from coast to coast. Let's look at that again, a strong power move. PS Bank, simply lang maasahan. Oh, we'll check that in a bit. In the meantime, Kirk Long, short. And the three-point play opportunity. It's 4-3. A minute gone by. Here in game number three. Elmer driving, Look finishing. What a move. And that's similar to what I was mentioning. Pull the big man of Bataneo out because you can operate easier inside. Raba sealing Espirito underneath. Forget about it. Look at how hard Raba Alusemi is working even before he gets that ball. Digging deep, positioning himself way deep inside, sealing off and giving his guards an easy target to hit with that post entry pass. Right away, four lead changes as Lingana gets it to go for three point shot. Stepping back and giving them a two point lead. Long, the spin cycle move. Nothing there. Raba getting the foul and will go to the line for two free leads. Let's go to Jessica Mendoza for her report from Ateneo. Jack. Boom, if you ask Coach Norman Black why the Blue Eagles lost last Sunday, he'd tell you the same thing he told me, that he's not in the mood for negativity today. He'd also say that today they will make up for their lackluster performance last Sunday, first by putting up an intense and energetic defense and pressuring the Red Warriors hard so that they are forced to do things they don't want to do. Coach told me the boys attempted too many three-point shots last time, 34 attempts too many, and so today they'll focus on attacking the inside. Finally, in terms of morale, Coach Norman admitted that when you get to this point in the season, losing is disappointing. But all we got to do is bounce back from game two the way UE bounced back from game one. Boom and TJ. Thank you for the Samson courtside report. The important number there, other than the 34 attempts, was the seven conversions. So 20% from beyond the arc. But the number two team in perimeter shooting going into the finals behind only the UST Growling Tigers. Let's get the other side from Tiff Atendido now. Go ahead, Tiff. Boom, yesterday in practice, everyone in the whole team, from the coaches to the players, even down to the PT, were very emotional because this is the last game, the biggest stage of their final performance, especially for the five seniors of UNI. But that's not to say that they will not be focused in playing game three today. They are even expecting Ateneo to do everything it can to defend their championship. So coach reminded the boys to wise up their plays. Wag magpadala sa emotion and play smart. Next, they were told to keep on believing our destiny is still in our hands if we do things right. With both teams even at one all, there's no more looking back. What matters now is how we play the whole 40 minutes of this ball game. Boom and TJ. And so far, so good for them. Tiff, thanks for the Samson courtside update. They're up two points, eight to six. Here's that attack. As Elmer Espiritu slips and slides for a strong power move, PS Bank simply lang maasahan. He tries again. The steal from Salamat, the number one player in terms of steals, leading the fast break, putting it up. No. The rebound ending up at Kirk Long. The bang in the bucket for Kirk Long and a useless foul from a UE player. When you get that steal, you normally have the advantage in the numbers, and that's exactly what Ateneo had. It was a four against two situation, so even if Eric Salama just threw it up yep. and, and prayed for an, a, a make shot, his teammates picked it up and Kirk Long with an easy field goal and the useless foul from UE. Open happiness with that reaction. You rarely get a reaction from that guy. And Coca-Cola, open Coca-Cola, open happiness. Get a free collectible Coca-Cola UAP, UAP limited edition bottle for every Jollibee Burger value meal with double upgrade of your fries and Coke. Be proud of your school. Two misses from the free throw line for Kirk Long on two three-point play opportunities. Acuna, too much muscle on the three. It is tied at eight all, our first deadlock of the game. Jai from the elbow, short. 
And Rafi Reyes able to track it down with seven minutes to play in the first quarter. High scoring so far as we've had only three minutes gone by and already 16 points combined scored by both teams. Elmer puts up the long shot. And that's what it was, very long. Kurt looking at Raba, drawing a crowd. Raba looking at his options. Up and under move is a bit short. After making his first two, he has missed his last three. Zamar in the thick of that defense. Oh. Left his feet without knowing what to do. Shot, crossover, setting up Raba Al Husseini. Puts it in. Beautiful setup there by Jai Reyes at the right spot and at the right time, dropping it off for the trailing Raba Al Husseini. And again, UE's transition defense left behind after a turnover. They want to post up Zamar. Elmer says, I'll shoot. That's two long triples for Elmer Espiritu. 10 to 8. Raba is ahead of the pack. Underneath. Unable to put it in. And Elmer Espiritu comes away with his first rebound of the game. Wow, Raba has six points already in this game. But I say he's already taken about, what, eight or nine attempts. Oh, a careless turnover here because of his eight-second half-court violation. And remember, UE, very good in terms of turnover numbers. In the meantime, we have a timeout with Samsung. Imagination lives. Last game of the UAP season. Coach Lawrence Johnson trying to join the ranks of Coach Joel Banal, Franz Pumarin, Bert Flores, and Pidor Rencio, the coaches who've been able to win a title in their maiden season. We are at 10 and 8. DJ, four turnovers already for the UE Red Warriors as Elmer, sorry, Eric Salamat. We haven't seen him salute the crowd in the last two games. Yep. And a penetration for him. So that's four turnovers, six turnover points. And an aggressive move to start for Eric Salamat. He likes that pick and roll and finding his way to the basket. Acuna goes to his right. Baclau was all over him. Four on three. Baclau running, finishing. Eyes behind his back. Jai Reyes leaves it for Nonoy Baclau. Absolutely beautiful pass there by the veteran Jai Reyes. He likes to be very disciplined in transition. Plants himself at the top of the key. And if he has a chance to shoot, he'll shoot. If he sees a trailer, he'll dump it off at the right time. And Eric Salamat now getting his energy also on defense. Taking the steal here. And then, Jai Reyes taking it away. Couple of clear position stops. Clear men, no dandruff, just cool hair. Six fast break points for Ateneo. None for UE so far. And it's 14 to 8 in favor of the defending champions. Ghana. Samar. Did he make it? Yes, he made it. No? No, no he said no. Referee Spinetta, Balyacer, and Marabe here. Let's look at a Powerade hyper play of the quarter. Powerade sports drink. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. That is the sixth fast break point for Ateneo. Now Paul Lee comes in for Happy Reyes. And I'd say that was the third time around that Dewey's big men were beaten down court by Ateneo's bigs. Substitution delivered to us by KFC. It's finger licking good. Five turnovers for Yui after that 24 second infraction. Raba. Ball almost taken away. Pauli is top five also in terms of steals. He's at number. Sorry, he's not number six in steals. As we look at our smart instant replay, we're helping sports. The double, the takeaway. Yep. Good help there by Paul Lee, playing cat and mouse double team. But when the ball is there, to take a swipe at him. And I wonder how tired Raba Alessani is already. He's had six attempts and a lot of touches of that ball in barely five minutes gone by. A lot of running too, TJ. Yep. Paul Lee puts his head down. To draw the foul from Jai Reyes with 4.19 to play. 14-8 is the score. Paul Lee. Coming off the bench today, as you look at the rest of the UE bunch, you see Hubalde, you see James Yap, Paul Artadi. Something that they've never been able to achieve is win a title for UE and a push by Kurt Long on the receiving Paul Lee. So that puts Ateneo in the penalty yep. now. From then on, you'll see free throws for UE in this quarter as four out of the five Ateneo players have one foul each. 4.15 remaining in the first, and an electric Araneta Coliseum. Espiritu, Acuna, never bashful to shoot a three. That's short. Kurt Long sends it to Baclau. Baclau could not handle the heat 
on that pass. And I'm looking at Coach Sharma back. He is not at all disappointed with that effort. He likes the way Ateneo is aggressive to run today. Just a little bit too much mustard on that one. Smart instant replay. We're helping sports. That is, by the way, the second turnover for Ateneo already. Five on UE. Ten on the 24. Paul Lee fades away. That's a tough shot. And it rattles out. Good defense by Kurt Long. Running the other side, Jai Reyes. All the way! Wow. Look at that. How rare do you see that? Jai Reyes taking all the way to the basket against the big guys of UE. One of those players graduating, playing his last UAP game. Paul Lee, top of the circle, three that short. He is one out of 12 from beyond the arc in this series, TJ. Reyes sets up Raba. That was too low, I think, for Raba. And he says it too. Here come the shock troopers now for the Blue Eagles. Nico Salva, Baco Nostria for Salamat. And Bacalao at the 360 mark. Ateneo shooting at 57%. We're taking a timeout with Samsung Imagination Lives. Watching us live on Studio 23, and of course, the replays on Balls Channel 34. And it is available in high definition for the very first time in history. This coverage of the finals is available in high definition on Sky Cable 166 Balls HD. The vice president is among the crowd that is here, celebrities and politicians that have gathered here at the Araneta Coliseum. Turnover number three for Ateneo. Paul Lee goes straight away. Careless inbound play there by Ateneo. Straight into the hands of Paul Lee. And that breaks the spell. Right. Jay Yui has not made a basket since 8.20 of this first quarter. That was an 8 to nothing run by Ateneo. Jai sets it to Kurt. This is a spot that Al oh, loves. <laughs> he called back. And there's a foul to boot. And I don't know if he's going to get a whining for this. Did he taunt Parinakis with that uh, pistol move? I don't think uh, it was seen okay. by any of the referees. He has something to say also to Parinakis. Another famous yeah. UE alumni is in the house. Robert Jaworski with us right oh, now. Free throw for Roma, Al Just arrived. Senator Tingoy, of course, with us also here in attendance in this mammoth crowd. Enjoying a sudden death Thursday. And Raba al -Husseini, four out of seven from the field. And right now, nine points. 19 to 10. That is the lead. The nine points of Raba al -Husseini. Patty thought about it. Top of the circle. Being taunted by Raba. Tough turnaround by Elmer. And Elmer has missed. That was beautiful defense there by Nico Salva reading the play and reading the move of Elmer Espiritu. Paco Nostria back to Jai. Jai inside to Raba. Cannot finish. Yagas taps it out. Here come the Red Warriors. They don't have the numbers though, but Paul Lee says, I don't care. They'll find a way to break through the smallest of creases wow. amongst four blue shirts. Incredible shot by Paul Lee. Raba again, five out of eight from the field by the last year's MVP. And even Enrico Villanueva is impressed. Five out of eight, eight attempts already for Raba on the same move. That's a lot, considering in game number two, he only had 11 attempts. So you're gonna watch out for his fatigue factor here. Nine point lead still, eight seconds. Acuna for three, that's short. Salva with his first rebound of the game. Jai is not also rested here as Nico underneath the trap. Kick it out to Bakun. Bakun finds Jai. Jai from the corner court. That's short. Great challenge by Paul Lee. He closed out on that one. Good extension there of that zone defense of Yui. They were tight inside and they extended quickly on the shooter. Adi asking for it. Raba is breathing hard. Adi looking to bounce at the fatigue. Paddy puts it up. No acting uh, jobs will be credited today by the referees, not in the sudden death ball game. Not in a move like that. No flopping as Jai all alone for the three. Nothing there. Teams are starting to, to miss now, TJ. You're all alone, wide open, and nobody even cares to go right at you. 
Espiritu with an aggressive move. And more than that, you could see how tired Rabah al Husseini is. Not only did he not jump the challenge that shot, he did not even put a hand up the challenge that layup of Elmer Espiritu. So we are seeing Rabah with nine and a half solid minutes here in the first quarter. Two out of five from the field for Elmer. And Rabah continues to ask for it. Rabah free for a minute, for a second rather. Rabah forces that one, asking for a foul. 16 seconds remaining. Paul Lee with a spectacular oh, a move. move. The bang in the bucket from the former San Sebastian stand. What a move. Breaking it down behind the back and getting it up and over Nico Salva after the bump. This is a one man trip, DJ. This was the one earlier. A Caltex fast break. Caltex with the unbeatable cleaning power of Tecron. Here's the other one. Behind the back, the hang tie move off the glass. He goes window shopping. And he is three out of five from the field and cuts the lead down to five, 21-16. You know, UE is five, or make that six out of 17, while Al Husseini, all on his lonesome, is already five out of 10, DJ. Wow, 10 shots already. And folks, it's no joke to take 10 shots. And that's why he's getting a well-deserved rest right now. Against double teams, fine. Right? Against triple double teams, exactly. Five seconds remaining. The pocket rocket is in. Cannot finish the play. Takes the ball away, but will run out of time. And after the first 10 minutes of game number three, Ateneo is on top, 21-17. The biggest lead of the ball game for them was nine. But Paul Lee and the rest of the UE Red Warriors making a little chase to end the first quarter. Can he duplicate his uncle's feet? Talking about June Reyes, of course, from that 1987-88 team. Ooh. As Ryan Buenafe starts the second quarter with a classic double clutch move. And he's one of those players that are being questioned coming into game number three where he's at. Him and Eric Salama, right. last year's Rookie of the Year, made a major impact against Rosal in the finals last year. But so far, this year has been absent. Well, he did a lot of that last year, but it's been far and few this year so far in this final series in terms of being a factor for last year's Rookie of the Year, Ryan Buenafe. Tokyo Tokyo, Holy Cow play of the game. Big beefy goodness and three flavors. Holy Cow, Tokyo Tokyo, beef bowls. They're dedicating this season to James Martinez, talking about UE who got injured, he injured his ACL uh, prior to the start of the season. And if I may repeat the conversation that I had, he was saddened about the injury, not just because, uh, you know, wanting to play, but he wanted to play for this coach and for this specific, or with this specific team, because he felt good about it. He felt they had what it took to go to the finals and maybe win it all. So he's in attendance. Salva against Paul Lee. Good challenge there by Paul Lee, standing his ground, not going for a block, and not going for a steal, just giving his body. Paul Lee scored the last seven points, DJ, of the first quarter for UE. Palenyagas, that will not count. And yes, it was downstairs. Coach Norman Black is livid with the guys on the floor for not boxing out. He felt that they played good enough defense to challenge the layup of Paul Lee, but then they should have gotten that defensive rebound. Let's go to Jessica Mendoza and find out what's what else happening from that side. Go ahead, Jen. Boom, barely any smile has been cracked on the faces of the Blue Eagles since they stepped on the court. A testament to the determination with which they are set to defend the championship today. They listen attentively as Coach Norman Black reminded them to always keep a lookout for the open man. Don't force your shots if you don't have to, he told them. Also, Boom, Coach Norman is not as happy with his boys running now as he was in the early minutes of the game. He told them, you've got to be ready to move your feet, put more energy on defense, and above all, stay in front of your man. Boom and TJ? Well, they did try to stay in front of Elmer Espiritu, but he still made the fadeaway as Eric Salama knocking down his first triple of the series. Of the city finals, I probably. He's zero <laughs> out of eight coming into this game, and he knocks down and sends it home. And the lead again is seven. Paul Lee from way out. That is way short as Baklao tracks it down. One for it. Salamat begging for the ball. Salamat finding a crease. Unable to put it in, though. Baklao dribbles out of trouble and then goes back. Yagas was there to bother him. Elmer Espiritu 
able to get the rebound. And the one thing we notice also in the first quarter when Ateneo was able to hold on to the lead, the guards of UE, their hustle was not yet a factor. And as I say so, yeah. we get another guy from off the, the bench. bench. Flores for the very first time in the finals, sticking it back to cut the lead down to five. Let's go to Tiff Atendido from UE. Yes, Boom. Unlike games one and two, UE is obviously a lot more fans today. The boys are very inspired and excited to play for them. But they were reminded that if, if there is anything that they have to prove, it's just themselves that they can do it. Now back to the ball game, coach emphasized on shot selection. Essential now, forget the numbers, forget the stats. We're not all emotions, we also have the smarts. Boom and TJ. Thank you very much for the Samson Portside update, Tiff. A foul with eight seconds to shoot. Barry Lagas, one of those graduating students. Open happiness with this reaction. And Coca-Cola, open Coca-Cola, open happiness. That is already his career high in the finals. Five points for Eric Salamat. There you go. And after that, he created an opportunity for his teammates. Drive and drop inside to Nico Salva for the easy layup. Raba is back in. Substitution delivered to us by KFC. It's finger looking good. Eric Salamat commits a foul on the steal attempt. That's going to be foul number two. Let's see if this would slow him down. Second personal, as you mentioned. 719 to play. Seven point lead. Here's Paul Lee. And that's Good the call. strip. You saw it on the wrist right there, on the right wrist of Paul Lee. Smart instant replay. We're helping sports. Kita Kita yung uh, slap on the wrist. And Salamat now sits on the bench. Jeffrey Kirk, Jeffrey Long back in the lineup for the Blue Eagles. Espiritu shakes off the sign. He wants Nonoy Baclao one and one. Elmer goes hard oh, against oh, the man. number two shot blocker of the league. And that is not easy to do. As you know, Nonoy Baclao will stay right with you all the way to the basket. 7-0-3. But that's part of your keys to winning. Yep. Taking it hard to the paint. Challenging the Atenea Biggs to foul trouble. Elmer not even challenging that three-point attempt. Elmer lagging behind now in this ball game. 6.48 to play. Yagas picking up the loose ball. Nothing there. And Baclao and Paul Lee. Warrior. 28-23 is the score. Five-point lead with 6.42 remaining here in the first half. Let's look at this tussle for the loose ball. 13 minutes for Elmer Espiritu, as we saw on our smart instant replay. We're helping sports. Espiritu playing, like I said, 13 minutes in this game. And now the legs are disappearing. You can see it in the game. This is what we yep. saw in game number one. He's only sat down for a minute or two so far today. In game number one, he actually, was, he hasn't sat down. He hasn't sat down. Okay. All right. So extended minutes so far for Elmer Espiritu. And that was key in their game to win as time. This is this one. Now look at that. Don't tell me this is not sudden death. Jairo Flores reacting. Ryan Buenafe reacting. Baclao keeping everybody aside. Again, we mentioned in the pregame, whoever channels his emotions or their emotions correctly in this series might have the edge. Both of them really aggressive, yep. not wanting to give way. And kudos oh. to referee Marabe right there. The official call is a jump ball. No foul is called, so it's going to be a possession arrow. Oh, wait a second. Is there a foul? Let's check. Looks like the fouls on Flores if they're going to give free throws to Buena Fe. Coach Lawrence Johnson begging for a jump situation. This is game number three. Okay, Best of three, final. The UAAP, both of them get a warning, TJ. Both of them. Jump ball. It's a jump ball situation. All right. So it was a sticking with that call of a jump ball and possession arrow pointing to Ateneo, so they retain possession, but with a fresh shot clock. Five point lead. Ateneo has led most of the way as Jai puts up the three. That's short. Jai also playing heavy minutes here in this game so far. Paul Lee, six, stepping oh, to the man. hole, and still saving enough energy to the very last moment for that jump against Kirk Long. Incredible move by Paul Lee. Under six to play. Baclao had Espiritu on him. Buenafe could not finish, but a foul on Elmer Espiritu. And 
for E squared, as they call him. That's his second personal. And you like that if you're Ateneo. You like the hustle shown by Ryan Buenefe, especially the guards and the wing guys. They have been out-hustled in both games, even though they won game number one. UE's guards were out-hustling him. So you like that sign shown by the guys off the bench for the Eagles. Smart instant replay showing you that one. Let's go to a timeout with Samsung. Imagination lives. Back with you here for more the UAP on Studio 23. Tip to top player matchup by Selecta Trinetto. Tip to top setup. Very interesting matchup indeed. Araba Aluseni going up against Pari Yagas, and especially now with the way Raba played extended and aggressive and intense minutes in the first quarter. Can he sustain his energy, especially on defense? And he's with us from the UE side. And he couldn't get tickets, he said, for games one and two. Alan Kaidik. The wife Minette is here earlier, Boise Sama, part of the last champion team from the UE Red Warriors in 1985. Ryan Buenafe on the line. By the way, the warnings earlier were given to Buenafe and Rafi Reyes and not Tyrone Flores. Okay. Mr. MVP. And, of course, uh, Smartida's head coach, Michael Toroban. And our friend made the Chupa. Looking on, with under six minutes to play in the first half. Missed free throw. Free throw attempts, two out of seven for Ateneo. Yui has only had one, and they made that one. The lead is four now. Yui hanging around. Barry looking at the friend, Paul Lee, looking to cut. Paul fades away, no. And Duran taps it away. Good help defense there from the weak side of Ateneo as the UE tried again to beat them back door. Similar to what they did in game two, the big men would hold the ball from the outside and then try to pass to the small men cutting inside. Great try! Oh, yeah. oh, Bang in the bucket, Ryan Buenafe on Pari Lagas. And the kid who has probably the least hang time amongst the athletic <laughs> players in Ateneo. Oh, look at the strut of Ryan Buenafe. Let's look at this. Dismantling three defenders. Oh, he wow. had him. He had him wow. already. But just upper body strength drilling that basket in. Ryan Buenafe and a strong power move brought to you by PS Bank. Simple lang maa Two out of three from the field. This guy is imperative for Ateneo for That's him to big. show up. That is big so far. His contributions today Six points. are big. The combined contributions, 11 points from him yeah. and Eric Salama. That's right. Great point, DJ. Meantime, as lead again is back to seven. A little bit of sluggishness in the UE side right, right now. I think they're relying on Paul Lee too much. Three seconds, Paul Lee ending up with a tough shot. Bakla was all over that. That free flowing offense was non existent. Yep, no ball movement there. Only Paul Lee. Oh, look out. Oh! Kurt Long could not. Will that ball in from the other side? Could have brought it down, though, and, and set himself up for an easy layup. But he wanted to go for the fancy one. Balacuna thinks slowing down here from the UE side. Paul Lee, spin cycle. Great anticipation by Nolan Baklao. Jai, able to get out of jail. Raba, we haven't heard from him in a long time. And another bang in the bucket situation. And he says hello to Duran who had nothing else to do but foul him. Nice, again, dump pass by Jai Reyes. He has had three or four crucial assists to the trailers of the fast break. Great decision-making so far by the veteran, Dynamite. Fourth assist. That's the fourth one. Brought to you by PS Bank. Simple lang, maaasahan. And Raba Luseni, six out of 12 from the field. 13 points. And it stays at 13. This lead is up to nine, once again, matching the biggest lead of the game. So Jai may not, not have had a three-pointer yet. He hasn't exploded offensively in terms of his own points, but he has created some opportunities for his teammates. Niagas from three. Yui starting to struggle here, DJ. Buenafe, Kurt Long all the way to the other side. No. Niagas, no way. Nope. Did not establish position at the time. And now, Elmer is bitting to have to be brought back in now 
for Erwin Duran because Yui is coming unglued so far yeah. here in the second quarter. You know, boom, Ateneo in game number two, they only had nine fast break attempts and only eight fast break points. And today you're seeing a much quicker Ateneo team and really attacking more in the fast break. Buena Fair thought about it with under four minutes to play. Laplau asking for it against his pin. Long quarter, court three. Gets it to go! And that's the biggest lead of the ball game. Seven points now for Kirk Long. So the other guys who have not been factors in games one and two, Long with seven points, Buena Fe with six points, Eric Salamat with five, a total of 18 points for those wingmen of Coach Norman Black. Valacuna is rejected by Norman Baclau. Chai, looking for a friend or looking for the basket. 14-point oh, lead. What a move by Chai Reyes. Not very familiar territory, but creating space inside and getting away. Three minutes remaining here in the first half. It's a big juggernaut for the defending champions. They're looking to drop the hammer early. It is an 11-0 run. And you know, DJ, I was about to say, or we said earlier, nothing is flowing in the offense of UE. And proof of that, as a blocking foul is called on Paul Lee, the seven assists of Ateneo, only one for UE in this game. That is a good indication in terms of the numbers. Ateneo really sharing the ball, moving it around, very patient, looking for the best opportunities possible. In stark contrast, it's like day and night. UE, they're back to their ways of nagkakanya-kanya, and they're missing so far. Alaksan FR3. Magnum Membrere, all part of the former Ateneo Blue Eagles. In attendance here at the Araneta Coliseum, we are experiencing an 11-0 run by the Blue Eagles. Mr. Jeffrey Cariasso, also on your screens, enjoying the action. And he told me that uh, his first, first time, time in the UAV live. In his own words, he says it's awesome. And it's awesome to have you with us, Jeff. Co host of the radio show. 236 remaining here. Last basket of UE was 604 on that drive by Paul Lee. Right. And again, you know, you go back, if you're UE, you're, if you're a fan of UE, you're concerned with the lack of movement, which they showed so much in game number two. Right. They had eight assists by the halftime, TJ, in game number two. Today, they only have one, as we mentioned earlier. It doesn't help that they're not connecting right. from the outside. You really also have to credit the defense of Ateneo, denying them the easy looks. They've had to force a lot of attempts. Kirk Long, Raba has conserved a little bit of his energy here in the second yep. quarter. He knows he can't take all the shots. He's trying to set up his other teammates. And look at this, Chai Reyes on his way. Dismissing all the defenders on the power range. Sports drink hyper play of the quarter. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. And that's going to be the third foul of Pari Yagas, who has not been an offensive factor today. Zero points so far for the guy who was eight out of 11 in game number two. Jai Reyes, one of those graduating students. Hoping to graduate with another title, not just with a title, right. but with another title. With 148 to play, 39-25 is the score. Here, winding down the first half. New East side, will stunned with what has happened. Three fouls on Yagas, two fouls on Espiritu, two fouls on Rafi Reyes. A winner in the juniors division. Championship last year for Jai. Looking for another one this year. Now the bench. Wow, really big and deep is Coach Lawrence Johnson for the very first time. And they bring in Yala into the ballgame. First time in the series. Yep. He didn't even play the final four even. Against FEU, by the way, where right. UE beat FEU twice. Espiritu missing. Minute 31. Yui has really gone cold here in the second half, right in the second quarter. And again, no ball movement. It's one pass, one shot. That's not how they won game number two. 
Buenafe inside. Raba unable to finish that one, and Lady Luck not smiling on UE as they tap that out. It's Derek Ramsey. Beside him is my partner, also in radio. It's me, yeah, if I... Oh, that's me. That's okay. me. Yeah, that's right. Spia. Eric Reyes, Paulo Bajonis, Eric Reyes also in that 1988 team. That's right. With Danny Francisco, that front line. Megan Young, my co-host in uh, the cheer dance competition. Right. You've got sharp eyes, too. Everybody they show up on screen, it's half a second for you. Good job. Your field goal percentage is very high. <laughs> what about all my co-hosts are here. <laughs> Jeff, Mia, and uh, Megan. Kurt Long for three, that's short. And Ayala with a rebound. UE behind by 15. Here in this game, remember, they won big in game number two by 20 points. Acuna, another three, and another miss. Two out of 14, TJ, from beyond the arc. At 14% shooting from three. Raba misses. They're lucky that Ateneo's not making right. the last couple of and shots. Even the X-Factors have not gone the way of UE. I have not seen a single guard get an offensive rebound for UE today. That's a great point. As Paul Lee makes it 2 out of 15 from beyond the arc. And UE has been scoreless for more than 5 minutes and 30 seconds. It's been a 19-8 to 8 scoring quarter. 19 points by Ateneo, only 8 for UE. 4 seconds left. They set up Baclao from the corner. No. That would have been. That would have been big. That would have been very true. painful for UE. Absolutely. It opened up an 18-point lead, but nonetheless, Atene should be more than happy with his 15-point bounce going to halftime. But more than that, it's the quality of defense that they are playing on the UE Red Warriors today. Blue Babble Battalion for the halftime show, courtesy of Samsung, with Samsung Imagination Lives. Stay tuned, game three of the finals of your UAAP season 72 will be back, only here on Studio 23. Welcome to Sudden Death Thursday here at the Araneta Coliseum. We are a couple of minutes away from the third quarter. Ateneo ahead by 15. That, my friends, is uh, the biggest lead for the uh, ball game for the Ateneo Blue Eagles over the UE Red Warriors. As both teams take a break, so can you have McDonald's delivered right to your doorstep. It was a horrible second quarter for the UE Red Warriors, a quarter that they'd rather forget execution-wise or anything else that happened. In the meantime, get superior hydration only from Gatorade. Again, Boom Gonzalez together with DJ Manota for ABS CBN Sports, game number three. The winner take all match between ABMU and UE in the second quarter. 
ended uh, badly for the UE Red Warriors, who were scoreless for more than half yep. of that quarter. Their field goal percentage way down, and Ateneo taking advantage of it. It was a 12 to nothing run for Ateneo that did a great job on both ends of the floor. They denied the penetrations of UE, they denied the many easy looks, and in the other end, they were the ones scoring at will. Looking at the halftime stats, 40% field goal shooting for Ateneo, not that as high as UE shot in game number two, where they dominated at 52%, but they're holding down UE to only 29%. And this is more of Ateneo's kind of a game. They are the best defensive team in the league. That's right. And they're showing it again today. Assists, they've only allowed one assist for UE. On the other hand, they've had seven inside points. Total dominance, 30 to 16 is the lead of the Eagles in that category, and keeping the ball in their hands, taking care of it. Only three turnovers for Ateneo as compared to six for the Red Warriors. Five of those turnovers in the first quarter and what brought the percentage down was the 15% shooting from beyond the arc for UE. Let's see if they bounce back in the third quarter. We'll be back. A concern here, the bench of Ateneo outscoring UE and not only just outscoring, the ones who were you know, sleeping through games number one and two have woken up. Yep, Eric Salama, Ryan Buenafe. And Kirk Long also yes. becoming offensive factors today, especially Kirk Long. It's always a bonus when you get a bunch of points from him because more than anything, they really rely on him defensively. But they've been trying to work on his uh, shooting confidence because sometimes he passes up on open shots. I, I notice uh, specifically coach, uh, assistant coach Sandy Arespacochaga always getting on the case of Kirk Long. Do not pass up that shot. If it's kicked out to you and you're wide open, you take it, you drain it because they do believe in his shooting abilities and it's a matter of him believing that it's a good shot to take. I don't think Kirk believes he's not a good shooter. Yeah, yeah. It's sometimes he doubts if it's a good shot in the system right at that moment. I think it's exactly what he did. He told me that's exactly what he told me. All right, more on that later. Let's go to Jessica Mendoza first and find out what happened at halftime. Go ahead, Jeff. Every point is going to count, including free throws. Now, these are words of wisdom coming from Coach Norman Black as he told the team to take their time at the foul line. In terms of offense now, the Blue Eagles need to keep the ball moving. Don't be afraid to pass, Coach Norman told the bigs, assuring them that they will get the chance to score as long as they remain patient. Now, as for the boys themselves, they punctuated the end of halftime with shouts of encouragement like, let's go, once in a lifetime now I'm back to back, and this is it. Boom and TJ. Thanks for the Samson courtside update. Jessica Mendoza from the Ateneo side. We begin the third quarter with UE again down 15 points, 40-25. 13% shooting from beyond the arc for the UE Red Warriors in that first half. And I just do not see the same energy right now. Right. It, it concerns me, and it, I'm sure it concerns all the UE fans, that in a game number three where, if we can take off from Jet, from Jessica Mendoza's report, every point, every possession, every little detail, every ounce of energy right. matters really in this matters. next 20 minutes. And there's a difference. I mean, some might argue you can never count Huey out. Yeah. Oh, man, look at that booming, looping three-pointer. Yeah, the sky ball. Yeah, he had to put it that high above Rabba Alusaini. But the difference today, you, you can never count Huey out. Yes, because they've come back from bigger leads. But in those games where they've come back from bigger leads, they've had a lot of intensity and desire. Exact fire. It's just so different today. I mean, game number two was just an incredible display right. of intensity for UE. Now, they have to dig deep here. Down to, down to 12, though, after that booming triple by Elmer Espiritu. Failed attempt for UE. Let's go to Tiff Atendita for another Samson courtside update. Boom, there were a lot of serious faces in the dugout earlier. The whole team, not just coach, was frustrated with their very bad shot selection. He said he could not live and play only with three-point shot attempts. Look for the chance to drive and penetrate. We are playing too slow. Do not watch them when they have the ball and execute on your defensive assignments. It ended with a visit with former Red Warrior and Senator Robert Jaworski. He said, it's not how you started, but how you ended. Boom, and TJ. Thank you very much. Well, if there's any team that knows that, it should be UE. It's not how they started this. this season actually as Salamat gets his second steal of the ball game and draws a foul from Rudy going back to the last play of Ateneo look at the swing of the ball to the weak side yes. and then Raba with a cut from the weak side so looking at the secondary options of the offense that is patience for you and that is good spacing by Ateneo and that by the way is the fifth assist brought to you by PS Bank Team Belang Maasahan fifth assist for Jai Reyes in this game he has been distributing, distributing and facilitating well. There he goes again to Raba. Raba unable to knock it down, though. Paulie 
Finds Zingana. A couple of players actually asking for that ball. Acuna sends that baby home. Second triple of UE. And this is where you know the UE kind of play. They can come back and they can come back fast. They can shoot a bunch of those in a hurry. Jai, he can shoot too. As he gets it to go and gets that three back from Balabunya. First triple of the ball game to Jai Reyes as he's been doing his job of keeping the tempo, controlling the offense, and creating opportunities for his teammates. Eight points for him. Paul Lee smothered by Nonar Baclau in a traveling infraction called on Paul Lee. Nonar Baclau, that's one of the best blocks he can do. You know, you shove it down and keep him down on the floor and force a traveling. He is averaging 2.5 blocks in this series. Here's another three-point shot. Brought to you by Alaksan FR. Body paint kahit saan. Agad kalab ang Alaksan FR. 45-31 is the score. Jai Reyes, you mentioned, that's the first triple he's had. After six attempts, he was all alone begging for the ball. And he gets it to go! Two out of seven. They left him behind. And Ateneo is looking to drop the hammer early here in the third. Back-to-back three-pointers. For the guy who's hoping to go back to back just like his uncle June Reyes did in 1987, oh, 1988. And that guy could shoot the lights out. He could score the lights out of, an, of any Coliseum. Look at this open happiness with his second triple from Jai Reyes and Coca Cola. Open Coca Cola, open happiness. And I know June Reyes has relocated abroad, and I'm sure he's found a way to get to TFC. Oh. He's watching us today. We are broadcasting all over the world via the Filipino channel. And of course, live and exclusive here in Studio 23 and in high definition on Pulse HD, Sky Cable Channel 166. An emphatic block. Darkness fell oh, on Paul Lee with that block brought to you by Rexona. Use Rexona after every bath. Uh, get a free collectible Coca-Cola UAP limited edition bottle for every Jollibee burger value meal with double upgrade of your price. Go be proud of your school. 17 point lead now by Ateneo, the biggest lead of the ball game. Even if you're seeing some three point shooting coming now for the Red Warriors. Substitution delivered to us by KFC. It's finger looking good. Patty Yagas is back in the, the game. 6.40 to play. When will we see that bravado that we always see from UE? Great fake by Eric. Set up job to Raba. Raba could not finish. Elmer Espiritu was there to bother that shot. But Elmer looks tired, TJ. Yep. He's lagging behind again. This is how we saw him in game number one. He exploded for 22 points in game number two. Most of them from the outside. Seven of the 24. Patty underneath. And again, Baklao there to alter the shot. Up top to Raba. Whoop. Too high. Acuna. Baklao was waiting, but Acuna high off the glass. A nice quick release there. Pinitawan Kagan to make sure it gets away from the hands of None Baklao. Still a big 15-point lead. UE needs to make some solid defensive stops and a bunch of them. Eric from the corner. Short. The rebound going to Kurt Long. Long. Ooh. Rejected by Elmer Espiritu. The average is 2.7. Make that 2.9. Well, that might be an answer to our question if he's really tired. He could be just pacing himself. He drives, fades away. Nice looking. Banker. Elmer Espiritu who goes window shopping in that sequence. Down to a Baker's doesn't lead. Eric Salama, nobody covering him. Paul Lee trying to recover. Al Hussein, he's short on the 18-footer. Three on two on the other end. Paul Lee goes to his strong side, slows down, puts it in. He knows when he can just take it easy. And Kakayarinya, the smaller guys in chances and defense, and that's exactly what he did. Don't look now. Yes, they can score in bunches. Back here at the Araneta Coliseum. Thank you very much for watching us live on Studio 23, exclusively courtesy of ABS-CBN Sports. Under five minutes remaining. Almost a completed steal. Uh, traveling attraction called on Ateneo. Now, we mentioned, TJ, in the first half, one assist only for UE as a shot block this time, brought to you by Rixona. Use Rixona after every bat. This quarter, they have... Four already. Wow. Big, big difference there. 
but in terms of UE moving the ball, sharing the ball, and being more patient with their shot selection. And that time around, defensively, their zone, their, their press now is working for them. They're half court oh. press. And an offensive foul. And then Eric Bass, was it an Eric Bass by Paddy? He looks at Paddy. They're checking each other. First, this tough shot. Elmer Espirito goes window shopping to cut that lead down. And a assist brought to you by PS Max. But you're noticing in that play in particular, you're noticing Rafa Alisaini pick his spots when he goes for a defensive aggressiveness. Yes. You know, he tries to face himself also defensively. Long. Another turnover, back-to-back. -back. This is an 11-point lead. A C2 best cheer of the day. Enjoy the best in life with C2 Green Team. In unison. The Ateneo side. Three turnovers for both teams here in the third. And 4.15 to play. A foul away from the ball here. Ball Down there. Ball as they were bumping and grinding in those screens off the ball. So that's on back on Austria. Second personal. 48, 37, the biggest lead of the ball game was at 17. And if I remember correctly, that was also the lead that they tried to chase in the first round, DJ, when these two teams first met. Yagas loses control. Coach Lawrence's facial expression says it all. Yagas, by the way, DJ, zero out of seven wow, big from difference. the field after scoring 13 and 18 in the first two games. Rebound tracked down by Val. Val had Paul Lee on the other side. Val forces the issue. It's, oh, a, it's, a, it's a charge. It is a, it's charge. a charge. Even though he tried to go sideways, he tried to avoid Eman Monfort a little bit. Couldn't see it from my angle, so here's the replay. Because he goes sideways with the left hand. Oh, but Monfort moved a little bit, just a little bit. He moved into him just a little bit. Check out Monfort. His feet are set, but at the last moment, he slides to Monfort, who tried to avoid him. So, so it should have been a block. Tough call. Tough call. Tough call. Very close to ball. Yeah, should have been a block. Smart instant replay showing that one. My concern there was Paul Lee at the, the other he side. Was, yeah, he was all alone. Could have blocked it out there. Buenafe finds Monfort. 14 on the 24. Raba looking for position underneath. 15-footer. Doesn't get the roll. The tap. Who wins out? Still up in the air. Lingane is fouled by Bakun Austria. He knew it. That's the third foul of Bakun Austria. Lingane gets it in the face. But that's, you know, for whatever it is, that's good indication for Atenea for their hustle today. They're more aggressive with the loose balls. Especially the guards. Yeah, the guards, the wingmen. They're more aggressive with the loose balls. They're more aggressive with the offensive and defensive rebounds. Because in games number one and two, you pointed out how the guards of UE have out-hustled. Yep. Ateneo, as we look at our hardcore heartthrob of the game, there's no substitute. Former teammates and good friends, Eric Salamat, Paul Lee. Brought to you by Silverworks. 324 to play, 48, 37. Ateneo going for back-to-back -back championships. You know, also today, amidst the fact that we saw Rabah with a hot start in the first quarter, he's been missing his outside yeah. shots. Huh? Smart instant replay showing this one. Smart, we're helping sports, and here comes the... Boink. There it was. Hard to see yep. what kind of impact there was. I'm sure, and, and it's only unintentional, obviously. Here, Fred and Lim with us also. Part of the incredible, massive crowd that we have witnessing game number three. 324 to play. Last basket of Ateneo, by the way, as Paul Lee charges. Oh, it's a tap out. Last basket of Ateneo was 706 in the third quarter. That was the Jai Reyes three at the yep. corner. The second of his back-to-back -back threes, That's right? It's been quiet so far. This is just down to 11. We say just because it was up to 17, 17 earlier. If you just joined us, Acuna to Espiritu, quarter court three. That's short. Paul Lee with the defensive rebound. Stripped away by Buena Bay and all alone, Rabba Al Husseini. Slam on Jamma time. Well, he got away. He was the one who challenged the outside shot of Elmer Espiritu, and Coach Robert allows that. If you challenge a shot, you can break away. Go ahead, get the fast break if we get it. And that's exactly what Rabba Alusani did. Time out brought to you by Samsung with Samsung Imagination Lives.
We're back here at the Internet the Coliseum. Powerade sports drink hyper play of the quarter. Drink up, power up. Sports is what you make it. Look down below as Rabba al -Husseini. Now with 17 points, eight rebounds. Open happiness with this reaction. And Coca-Cola, open Coca-Cola. Open happiness. Under three minutes remaining. It's a Baker's doesn't lead. A full quarter ahead of us. For those of you who just joined us, Patty, who is zero out of seven, cannot get himself going. That's a, a forearm thrown. Not thrown, but the foul courtesy of the forearm. I'm surprised they did not go to this earlier in the ballgame, especially in the second quarter when they could notice Raba was tired from a really exhausting first quarter. They would need this guy, Mark Van Pulve, underneath. Habitant built body, increased body mass. Nico Salva is back in the ballgame. Those are the numbers on your screens. Acuna, Altuzama. Swing it over to Barry, top of the circle. As he found his rhythm here today. Rafi to Elmer Espiritu against Nico Salva. Very athletic matchup with 12 on the 24. Elmer clutches that one. Forces the issue and the foul. That was a bump from Ryan Bueno, who oh, helped down from there on the Salva. double team. Oh, but it's going to be called on Salva. That's his second personal foul. Check out our Haynes Pool Couple of the Game. Haynes, America's number one brand of underway, underwear, rather. Paulo Chidoro, Chrissy Chu, both from Ateneo. Elmer Espiritu, those are the numbers, 13 and 6. Zero out of one for the free throw line. 22 points here in game number two. And he is averaging 75% in the finals from that area, the free throw line. Misses both. Ooh. Thanks Shh. is a factor for him, really, for me. He's had his spurts. They had a block there and then a fade away, but then looking like he's fatigued now again. Let's check the numbers and check the time that Elmer has committed to so far here in this game. Five on the 24. In rhythm. Time to solve the rhythm today. If I'm not mistaken, that's his first 15-foot jumper for the game. Barry could not handle the pass. He recovers. We go to Elmer, to Rafi, who hasn't been a factor also here in this yep, game. They have been debated. Jim, Nikana, and yep. Zaba. Here comes Elmer, trying to give it to Barry. Nothing there. That's a bump for Paul Zaba. Elmer has been to close to 28 minutes already in this game. It seems like it's, it's just been passed on from the UE guards. They were the X Factors in game two. And it's passed on to Ateneo's guards. They're the X Factors so far today. Jack and Jill, fantastic moment. Jack and Jill snacks. Life's fun here in the UAAP. We always try to invite you to come and watch live because there's just nothing like it. But if you can't, we're here for you. Here at the I Studio 23. The replays of Balls, Channel 34. High definition coverage of Balls, 166 Sky Cable, Balls HD, that is. And for all, all over the Philippines or all over the world to the Filipino channel. We'd like to say hello to all the Filipinos watching and I hope you're safe and in good spirits as we look at Coach Norman Black trying to go for his second title in five years in three finals appearances. Ryan Benefit now with eight points in the ballgame off the bench for the New Eagles. What a time for them to show up, huh? But there's no other time to show up. This is the time. One last game. <laughs> Barry and Nico in a wrestling match underneath. And a foul call by Nico Salva. Well, he's trying to brace for the impact. There's Barry really banging hard on him <laughs> with or without the ball. He got caught with a hand check there. Hand That's going to be two free throws again for Barry Yaga. And hopefully for him to get his rhythm in yeah. terms of shooting. Because as we speak, he's still 0 of 8. Scoreless today with three fouls. It was eight out of 11 for 19 points in game number two. Zero seven, let me uh, correct myself. Zero out of seven makes his first free throw. One point for the graduating student of Coach Lawrence Johnson, Barry Yagas, whose numbers we've seen increase every year. 
the UAAP. 13.8 coming into the finals, 9.1 rebounds. That both are career highs for him, season 72. Numbers for Patty Yamas. Lead down to 15. If you are UE, we'd want to bring this lead down to less than double digits to end this quarter. You're right. Because it's going to be mentally and physically exhausting to come back in the fourth with this crowd, with, it, with this atmosphere, and with what's at stake. And with this kind of an experienced crew yeah. from Ateneo. Three taken by Jai Reyes. Third triple of the ball game. And the biggest lead now established with 18. 57 39. They're looking to break the backs of UE as early as now, TJ. Elmer to the other Elmer. side. And they've got far few those highlights for UE. And the minutes that they played, you know, yep. that's another concern. If you're going to make a comeback in the fourth quarter, the minutes that they will play. Jai begging <laughs> for possession on the other side. Wide open. After shooting nothing in the first half, Jai is three out of three in the Look third at the quarter. Pass. Oh, almost got it to go. UE lagging behind the transition. 12 on this game clock. Parillagas underneath. Could not get the call and could not get the shot. Two seconds remaining. The steal by Paul. He pitches. Whoa! Oh, man. And not even Luck is smiling. Lady Luck is not smiling on the UE Red Warriors. Ateneo looking to put them away. A sweet 16-point lead for the defending champions at the end of 30 minutes of action. We will be back. We're back with you, folks, for the last 10 minutes of Season 72 of the UAAP. And Ateneo looking for back-to-back -back titles. They're up by 16. And the UE Red Warriors hoping that they can come back, show a little heart and will to come back as they make a defensive stop here to start off the fourth. Very, but still very manageable if you talk about the time. 30 seconds only gone by here in the fourth. But the difference is, if you look at the lethargic of UE, yeah. you did not really see the spark a little bit, just a little bit at the early part of third quarter, wherein they scored 16 points compared to Ateneo's 17. So it just has not really been there all game long for UE. What about Chai Reyes, huh? Scoring again from the quarter. Crucial there was the eight points only in the second quarter right. by UE. Very explosive team, only scoring eight points in the second. 49-41. Acuna will try his hand at a three. That's short. Acuna, Liagas, Linganay, Reyes are three of 23 out from the field. No, make that three of 24 after that shot from Dal Acuna. And remember, we've been saying, even in their loss in game one, more so in game number two in their big win, they were the major factors that were doing a lot of things for Yui, not just the points, but also the hustle. Elmer spit it to with an Alexan FR power fast rebound. Body paint guides out of Metalabang, Alexan FR. Jai Reyes, zero out of five from three point area in the first half. Now four out of four in the second half. Let's go to Tifa Tendido for UE now. Boom, we have beaten Ateneo last Sunday, and we can surely do it again this time. Stay close to us, the ball, and pressure him. Treat this quarter as the last few minutes, as the most important last few minutes. They're just waiting for us to make a mistake, so do not give them that chance. There is no more tomorrow, and we all want this. We have been improving every game, and this is the perfect time to explode and go all out. You can do it if you want to. Anything can still happen. Lady Luck may not be smiling at us, but the Warriors are still very positive to steal this game from the Moon Eagles. Boom, TJ. Thank you very much for the Samson courtside update. Offensive rebound by Donoy Baklao. And it's not going to be easy for Yui since they're playing small ball once again. Elmer Spiritu taking a breather. While Acuna is now moonlighting as a power forward together with Barry Yagas. Barry has not made a field goal yet. Draws that foul from Rabba Aluseni. All his points coming from the free throw line. Let's go to Jessica Mendoza for her version of the Samson court side up there. Boom, Coach Norman Black repeated his warning to the Blue Wolves not to waste their shots by taking care to set up their play once they 
push the ball as far down the court as possible. He added that they ought to take advantage of the Warriors' fouls and attack as hard as they can. But much more important than offense, coach wants the paint shut down. We're not going to win this game without defense, I'm telling you now, he said. This is a statement followed by Coach Sandy Aras Papachaga. Kahit di tayo makashoot agad, basta di sila makashoot. Thank you, Jessica. Remember, they were outscored 44-22 inside the paint. In game number two, as you look at Elmer Espiritu, he's sure to come back yep. a bit. He should be taking a breather, but he's yeah. standing up on his seat. <laughs> I guess he can't take the stress and the anxiety. Uh, I'm sure. So he's just sit down and watch his team. By the way, let me just add that those are the last reports also of Jessica Mendoza. They don't go over time. Yep. <laughs> for the fourth quarter here in season 72. Congratulations great and great job for both Tim and Jessica. I'm sure your schools are very proud of uh, how you represented them here for ABS-CBN Sports. That's a traveling wow, attraction yeah, called yeah, yeah. an Eric Salaman. 721 remaining here in season 72, at least in regulation. As we look at an Alaksan FR three-point shot, body paint kahit saan. Get the love, ang Alaksan FR. Cunha with eight points. You know, it concerns me if you're, again, looking at the numbers for UE, nobody has made it to double figures yet except for Elmer Espiritu. Now, this is a right. team that had four players averaging in double figures going into the finals. That's right. It's an excellent The point. only team that actually did that. And even in games one and two, they had at least three scorers as Eric Salamat navigates his way through traffic and puts it up and in. And we're going to see an early timeout by Coach Lawrence Johnson. Not want to give up yet as Eric Salamat saying, Looks like we're going to be coasting here in the fourth quarter. Will UE allow that? That's the question. Time out with Samsung Imagination Lives. Back here at the Arenetta Coliseum, we are six minutes and 56 seconds away from the end of season 72 of the UAAP and Ateneo with a uh, commanding 18-point lead. Parillaga still looking for his first field goal. Great defense by Raba. Rafi from 16, short. And a chase down by Ateneo. Body language is not looking good right yep. now, DJ. So if their outside shots are not falling, you know, they, they did that in game two, but they went to the inside and drove. We haven't seen a layup from Rafi yesterday. We haven't seen a, a drive from Rudy Lingana today. Right. And partly that's also because really Ateneo stuffed it up inside. Absolutely. They've done a better job of defending the perimeter compared to game number two, where, as you pointed out so clearly, Ateneo gave up a lot yeah. of easy layups. It looked like they rolled out the red carpet for some layups for UE in game two. 53 starter points for Ateneo, only 29 for UE. And 38 points in the paint for Ateneo, 22 only for UE. Acuna trying to chase it down, Baclao takes it back. Four on the shot clock, though. Eric takes a peek, puts up the shot. <laughs> that would have brought the house way down in that way. <laughs> Coach Lawrence Jokes on there. Featured at our Greenwich Body Sawback Cheesy Moment. New Extreme Cheese Pizzas for Men. Meeting BT for the boys. This was during the introductions of the okay. starting fives, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Baklao and Kirk Long here. Baklao also playing in his final game in college. And for the UAAP, at least. As there is still the Philippine Collegiate Championships. Right. And Patty just has not gotten any space from Raba today. 5.22 remaining. A lot of dreams will be coming true after five minutes. Some will be, will remain unfulfilled for some players. Jai sets up Raba. Fly by move, loses the possession, puts it up. And Paul Lee there to gather the rebound. Picking up scraps. Sends it to Lingana. Lingana uses his body to protect the ball. Draws a foul from Eric Salama. Well, they have the right thing in mind. Attack, and attack quickly. Even if they don't have the numbers, they got to have to bring those points up in a hurry to get those defensive stops. Substitution delivered to us by KFC. It's finger looking good. Elmer Espiritu now last ditch stand, probably. He got a really long rest of about five minutes. He didn't play the whole fourth quarter yet. So he got a solid five minute rest from Coach Lawrence Chongson. 18 points, five minutes, TJ. Your thoughts? 
He's had 18 points. No, I mean, the, uh, the, oh, if, if we do the oh, math yeah, now. Yeah. yeah, tough. It'll be really tough. But if there's a team who can do it, you can. I mean, if they just hit a barrage of three-pointers, just hit them in a row and get some defensive stops. But the problem is, Ateneo, this will probably be for Ateneo to lose if they lose this game uh, now, because uh, they're going to have to play not smart. They're going to... Way gonna sloppy. Play, yeah, exactly. Sloppy and hurry too much. If they're going to be patient, take care of the ball, and still take good shots, I think they can work this clock well enough with this lead. We'll see what happens. Eric Salamat sets up Baklao. Ganay called for the foul. One of those players graduating also his fourth personal foul. Here's the strip job or the strip attempt. Ononay Baklao caught in our smart instant replay. We're helping sports. I think Ganay couldn't do anything else but to hack him from behind. You know, we mentioned at the end of the third quarter, coming into the fourth, what UE will have to contend with is not only this big lead, but going up against a veteran, experienced crew who has won a championship before. They've played in moments like this before. They know how to close it out. You know, like I always say, the discipline of those championship teams to bounce back after losses. They lost big, 20 right. points, but now they're leading big. It's, it's, it's a team. Erased from their memory. It's totally erased from their memory. They lost by 20 points. It's not a demoralizing issue at all today. Especially with the way they started this. Right. We uh, have them close to 19,000 people here at the Araneta Coliseum. Rudy Vingana will fall out. Well, this ball game. His fifth personal foul, and that's it for him in his collegiate career. He doesn't realize it. He just realized it now. And that's, that's his UAP career. All the effort he poured out today. Not as effective as games one and two, but he gave it his all. So Parillagas comes back in the game. But Lawrence Johnson, regardless of the outcome of this game, a stupendous job, an incredible job. Nothing to be ashamed oh, of for Yui yeah. at all, at all, for this whole year. But with four minutes and 17 seconds left, they have to start getting stops, and that will not help. He has just owned the paint today. 20 big point lead now by Ateneo. As Rabah Luseini did not make a living from the perimeter today, but he's shown that he can still dominate the inside. Yui now forcing three-point shots in this game. Paul Lee off to the right. Gets with a left-handed shot. They need more of that than more stops. Backcourt points, Ateneo with 30, Yui with 80. That's a big difference today, huge difference today. It is Salamat against Abunya. He's trying to milk as much time from that clock. Seven on the 24. Buenafit. Baclau able to put it in. They get that basket, put it back on the 20-point lead, and they hit that with only two seconds left in their shot clock. So doing a great job of milking the clock as much as they can. And UE is staring at the barrel right now. 69. 49, the biggest lead of the ball game. Back here at the Araneta Coliseum with three minutes and five seconds remaining. Paul Lee, going to get it off the glass to cut the lead down to 18. It is 69-51. Two minutes and 49 remaining. Jai Reyes really been spectacular in the he's, second half. He's been huge today, not just the points. I mean, he's found his range. He has three three-pointers today, but he's really controlled the tempo for Ateneo. And he kept oh. under control. Look at the big wow. block from Ryan Buenapin. Another emphatic block, and another big guy running at the other end. Let's see what the call is. And he'll remain. Wow. For Ateneo, Ryan Buenapin. He also, from San Sebastian, well, that time, he couldn't stop the Paul Lee incursion. Alaksan, power fast, body paint. Kahit saan, agad talabang Alaksan FR. Fifteen on the shot clock. Salamat pulls up. Yui Red Warriors. 
Two minutes and 15 seconds away as Elmer is good to misses this one. To take free throws courtesy of the foul from last year's finals MVP. You know, another stat that Ateneo's own today, as you see this big block by Ryan Buenefe, oh, learning a thing or two from Nonoy Baclao. Nowhere to go. It's caught in our smart instant replay. Smart, we're helping sports. And another stat that Ateneo's own D today, we've turned the tables around in the turnover category. Uh -huh. In game numbers yes. one and two, even in their games that they won and they lost in one and two, UE has been good at taking care of the ball, and they force Ateneo to more turnovers. Today, it's been the opposite thing, and that has been a big factor also for Ateneo, especially if UE's been trying to get back in the game. They just haven't been able to force those turnovers. 69-52 is the score. The game one winner has won the series three out of seven times. Finals. It's the final four format was instituted. Last two minutes brought to you by PS Bank Simply Lang Mahasan. The last two minutes of season 72 of the UAAP. The gunslinger from Ateneo Jai Reyes misses that one. He finally missed something here in the second half. Balacuna from the corner rattles out. Will this be another trip chapter in, in the story heartbreaks, in this list of stories yeah. of heartbreaks? For the UE Red Warriors. Although, although I don't think it'll rank as high up there as yes. the years that they were really yes. favored to win it all. Yes, yes. I, I mean, think. there were a couple of years that they won in the preseason tournaments. There was one year they swept it all the way yeah, and lost right. two games against La Salle in the finals. They, they were not pegged as favorites this year, but they sure as, you know, proved their worth of being a finalist so far this year. We'll get back to that point in a bit. Time out with Samsung Imagination Lives. Back here at the Ananeta Coliseum with a minute and 24 remaining here. Paul Lee will take two free throws. You know, going back, DJ, to that point that you were making, you know, it's a list that's still a list. It's part of the list of heartbreaks as Eric Salamat now leaves this game. Five fouls. Better showing for him in terms of his all-around game. Uh -huh. As he hugs his uh, teammates. Seven points. And he's hugging uh, the two players who are graduating. And that's, uh, of course, Raba and Zai. And you just go back to that point about heartbreaks. You, you're saying this is not as big, obviously, because they weren't expected to be here. And Ateneo was favored all the way. I'm sure in their hearts, they knew they could win the final. Yes. So in their hearts, it's still hard. They believed they could beat Ateneo. And they saw that even in the close loss in game number one, where they hung it all the way. And that's what carried their confidence in game number two for the blowout win. And to add to that, uh, just to an interesting stat oh, here, an so interesting so fact point. Since the year 2002, the team that won the title has beat UE either in Final Four competition or in the finals. So the teams that have the champions since 2002 have beaten UE in the finals wow. the last the final six four. seasons. Now remember, Coach Lawrence, some sort of a charm. Yeah. Now remember, Coach Lawrence Shonks on one of his motivations for this year to bring, bring the title to UE, other than that whole drought thing is the fact that he said he wanted, um, in his words, my bottom line. Yep, my bottom line. Dahil the dominant map ng Ateneo na Pasal and you, nakasingit ang UST in 2006, he wanted one for himself. This crowd of almost 19,000 are ready to explode, or at least the side of blue, ready to explode in a minute and seven seconds remaining as the writing is already on the wall, so uh, so to speak. And we are 67 seconds away from back-to-back -back championships for Ateneo. And for the UE Red Warriors, they will have to wait again another year to add on to that 24 years. But nothing to be ashamed of for them. They should keep their heads up high. As they made a great, great run this year. You know, they were... Odds were against him in the final yeah. four alone, yes. going having to beat FU twice in a row. Yep. And by the and way, they did it. Of course, spectacular. Of course, course yeah. people will argue it was an FU without their leader uh, Andy Marcaroca. But then, then again, the way they did it and to do it back to back is still not easy. Oh yeah. By, by whatever you say. PJ, if you were a coach, would you pull out Paul Lee, Elmer Spiritu, Karen Yagas, uh, or maybe not Paul Lee, but the graduating students? Probably, yeah. To give them their, you know, the applause. applause from their fans. Matthew Reyes, as we know, was not a factor in game, game three. 
For the UE Red Warriors, nothing to be ashamed of. It was an incredible run to the finals. Bucking every single odd, ex exceeding every single expectation, except for themselves. I'm sure they, again, expected to be here in the finals. Eight-game winning streak. And they dealt Ateneo a loss here in the finals, game number two, an emphatic one at that, which set up the seventh death match. But really, the factor here is Paul Lee, three, I believe, and we'll go back to our three game details, is that experience factor and the composure of Ateneo, the discipline that comes from the experience. It's, key. it's very, very key today. They did the little things that they had to do. They did the little things that they had to execute, played much better defense, played much better in terms of the hustle from the guards. And that all was stemming from the heart, the desire, and that composure, which comes with experience of winning a championship before. The tears are going to flow now from the UE Red Warriors. This venue has seen a lot of that, a lot of heartbreaks, a lot of victories, a lot of euphoric celebrations, a lot of sadness too. It's, it's just the way sports is, really. Of 71. 58 is the final score, and Coach Norman Black celebrating his second championship ring here in the UAAP. And the celebration begins. The confetti drops here at the Araneta Coliseum. On this Thursday, Thriller. Coach Norman Black, Coach Norman, Coach Norman Black's motivation DJ here this year to win was to give those graduating players a title. He never mentioned himself, he never said stuff about himself to get the second championship. He never the said that. The only time I heard him mention himself and, and, and relate to his experience is that he said he's won back to back championships before. Yeah in the PBA, and he knows how difficult it is to do that. He knows how difficult it is to maintain that high oh, yeah. level of focus and a yeah. high level of motivation and hunger yeah. to get that back-to-back, because -back. you can imagine that along the way you may stumble in your effort to go back-to-back, -back and you can just relax and say, it's okay, we yeah. won one last year, yes. let somebody else win. But to push them all the way is phenomenal for a coach. To win one is already incredible, but to defend one is a an even more amazing feat. Mm -hmm. Albert Jaworski now will make his way out of the Araneta Coliseum. Yui loses here, 71 58. We'll take a break. We'll be back here with the celebrations from the Big Dome. <laughs> UAP, the Ateneo Blue Eagles defend their title. They go back to back feat that they accomplished back in 1988, and they do it again. In the meantime, congratulations to them for winning the UAP. Red Ribbon gives the perfect partner to celebrate the victory with a new Red Ribbon White Forest. Whatever the celebration, it's more beautiful with a Red Ribbon. Abal Hussein graduating with another title. Two under his belt for the Blue Eagles. As we show you our fit and right burning move a turning, our turning point of the game, a most refreshing way to burn it is Jai Reyes burning it up. The gunslinger really heating up in the second half and putting this game away. In the meantime, we'll have more post-game awards and interviews with the winning team to wrap up season 72 of the UAAP. We're back here at the Araneta Coliseum. Celebration continues for the Ateneo Blue Eagles. 71-58 is the winning score for the back-to-back -back champions, the Ateneo Blue Eagles. Right in the thick of things, DJ Manotok with Jai Reyes and Eric Salamat. Go ahead, DJ. All right, thanks, Lul. I'm joined right now by a guy who is probably the most proud Atenean to say back-to-back -back deserves uh, another back-to-back -back for the Reyes family. First of all, Jai, uh, you know, I, I can't imagine what this feels like for you and your family. What do you want to say First of all, to the fans of Ateneo and to your family, who I'm sure was under a lot of pressure this year for wanting to get this. Well, yeah, there's been a lot of talk about the back-to-back -back and the family thing because of my uncle June, who won back-to-back -back titles also in 87-88. But first of all, 
to the Ateneo crowd. Let me hear you for one last time. I just want to thank everyone in the Ateneo community during the downs. They were still there to support us. Uh, I, just, I just love all of you who are wearing blue right now. So there, thank you very much. This championship, this back-to-back -back is for all of you guys. All right, let's get into the game a little bit, Jai. Coming in in the first half, you weren't as hot shooting, but you became the leader on the floor. You were dishing out assists, and you know you took that role upon yourself. Was that something that Coach Roman told you that to wait for the offense to come to you and set the tone offensively first? Well, yeah, I think Coach Norman already has a headache telling me that since the start of the season okay. to take care of my teammates first. And for one last time, he asked me to do it. And I just, want, I just wanted to win today. So whatever it took to win the championship, I'm just so glad to have done it. But that shotgun was in action again in the third quarter. Three big triples in that breakaway third quarter. What was that like? What was the emotions going through you at that moment when you're really pulling away? Well, I just got the, into the game, into the zone. Um, well, Coach Norma just gives me all this co this confidence, as, as well as the coaching staff and all of my teammates. They just egged me to go on, keep on shooting, and the time was right, and the shotgun came. <laughs> Congratulations again. Fairy tale ending for Jai Reyes in his UAP career. Once again, Jai Reyes, graduating senior for Ateneo. Now we're joined by Eric Salamat. You know, Eric. I know you know this. Everybody was wondering where you've been in games one and two. I, I can't imagine the pressure on you, but what was it like to wake up today? You had some big points. You had some big moments defensively. What was going through you today? Well, uh, first of all, I uh, thank you so much to seniors. Because, uh, you know, for really game this game, so for me, Raba, Nora, and Jai. Oh, uh, for me, the game three, I don't want to be a nightmare. Because I really want to give them the game. Yeah. Was, it, was it added pressure going into the finals? You had a great season. You averaged almost 12 points a game, almost three steals a game. But uh, Medjo, it took a while for you to warm up in the finals. What was it like uh, bringing it up to that level and being one of the leaders this year? Well, I'm uh, really to explain you what you you to the finals. But I really need to work hard in practice. Well, you're still going to be around next year. What will it take for Ateneo to get three in a row? I'm uh, keep working hard. Uh, Keep believing. Thanks. All right, thank you. Congratulations once again. Eric Salamat of Atene. We'll have more interviews from some key players. And of course, of course, Coach Norman back right here in the UAP in the last game, game number three, as Atene wins it big against UE. Stick around here on Studio 23. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Araneta Coliseum. Well, first of all, for those watching us on Studio 23 and all over the world through the Filipino channel, We'd like to say thank you very much for watching us all throughout season 72. And second of all, before we proceed with the awarding ceremonies, let's just give, where cre uh, give credit where credit is due. Two teams that took different paths to get to the finals. We all know what UE went through to get to the finals. We all know what uh, Ateneo went through to get to the finals. Let's all give them a big round of applause, both Ateneo and UE. Thank you very much for putting up an incredible, exciting series for Season 72 of the UAAP. In the meantime, we would like to acknowledge the board of members who are here with us at the end of Season 72 of this UAAP. We'd like to acknowledge Mr. Robert Pagia, Also, Mr. Richard Palu. Ms. Carmelita Mateo. Dean Leilani Gonzalo. Mr. Edmundo Bakuli. Father Ermito de Sagon. Mr. Emmanuel Fernandez. Mr. Anton Montinola. Ms. Josie Jocelyn De Leon and Mrs. Felicitas Francisco. The members of the board, thank you very much again for an incredible season 72. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to award our second runner up. And Mr. Robert Pagia, Mr. Richard Palu, and Ms. Carmelita Mateo will award the second runner up trophy to the hosts 
of season 72 of the UAAP. Let's all give it up for the Far Eastern University Tamaraos. And ladies and gentlemen, we have Pipo Nondu and Bert Flores here to receive the award for FEU. Thank you for an incredible job of hosting season 72 of the UAAP. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, helping us award the first runner-up, Dean Leilani Gonzalo, Mr. Edmundo Baculi, and Father Ermito Desagon. This is also Mrs. Uh, Felicitas Francisco and Miss Jocelyn De Leon. Ladies and gentlemen, the first runner-up trophy. A gallant stand. Let's call back the UE Red Warriors. The University of the East will receive a trophy and medallions. Mr. Bong Tan coming out to receive the trophy. Congratulations, sir. A great, great series and a great, great team. Congratulations again to UE. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to call on Mr. Anton Montinola, Ms. Carmelita Mate Ma Mateo, Mr. Robert Pagia, Mr. Emmanuel Fernandez, Mr. Ricky Palu, and also Ms. Gina Lopez to join us for the awarding of the champion. Ladies and gentlemen, they ended the elimination as the number one seed. In 2003, they had a chance to repeat. That didn't happen. But in 2009, they duplicate the feat they accomplished back in 1988. The 2009 UAP Season 72 Champions, the Ateneo de Manila Blue Eagles.
Congratulations again, Ateneo. All right, celebration and the awarding is not over yet. Let's uh, position ourselves here first. All right, while, while the celebration continues here, we'd like to call on Mr. Anton Montinola, a UAP president, and also Mr. Manuel Fernandez, Oh, Mr. Emmanuel Fernandez will join us.